All right, what about the culture Franco and uh, bacon pancakes? Bacon pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Bacon pancakes, that's what it's gonna make. Bacon pancakes. Good morning, everyone. It's 50 degrees out. All right, we are back at the Cartoon Network kitchen. All right, well, good morning, Finn and Jake. How are you doing? Let's take a second to appreciate the water cup that was brought out to me. We have like our own server for breakfast. So bring over salt and pepper, forks and knives and spoons, sugars, and they even have little mints. Never thought they would have a Cartoon Network hotel mints. Is it a mint? That's funny, peppermint time. I got that OJ. You gotta start the day off with some sunshine because there is no sunshine here in Pennsylvania. Now, while we've been waiting for our food, they have these like screens that are set up like that. It's the kitchen. And we've just been watching all the Cartoon Network characters interact with each other cooking. So there's, they have four different screens for like the Cartoon Kitchen. Oh my god, this is the gravy bowl? Yep. Holy crap. Power puff pancake with no oh, whip. Thank you. Oh, that how looks, adorable. And then your bacon pancake. Oh my gosh. And I'll be right back with the rest of the thing. <laughs> Looks Dude, this bad. looks bomb. That, now the breakfast menu here is really cool because each like breakfast item is themed around a different Cartoon Network character, except one. Oh, oh my thanks, god! Man. I appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> no. It just keeps going. It looks good. Thanks. Anything else? Look, look at the tater tots. Oh, they're in the shape of a star. Oh, <laughs> they're in so the shape cool. of a little star. So guys, first off, I got the Lancaster County Tater Gravy Bowl, two scrambled eggs, sausage gravy topped with a bed of tater tots with bacon crumble and shredded cheese. Let's see how the scrambled is. Oh. Um, Mmm, my God. That's no joke. That gravy with the cheese and the egg and the bacon. The bacon pancake, you can get one, two, or three. I got two of them. So it could be large bacon pancakes with house-made walnut butter and Jake's maple syrup topped with a piece of caramelized bacon. Bacon pancakes, bacon, bacon pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like there's little chunks of bacon inside the pancake. And let's see how this piece of bacon is. There's a lot of like spices and seasonings on it. All right, goodbye, Jake. Thank you for those bacon pancakes. All right, so we just got back to our room. We finished breakfast. Everything was pretty good. Salad, like, I would think I would give the uh, bacon pancakes probably 8 out of 10, and then the uh, the skillet, like, an 8.5 out of 10. Like, really good. I want to talk about this hotel before we kind of do our final little walkthrough before we check out. Incredible. I really went in with, like, low expectations. I just thought it was going to be just a couple Cartoon Network stickers up on the wall, like a hokey, tacky sort of hotel, and I was blown away. Let me tell you about what this place used to look like. Yeah, this is what the rooms and the front entrance used to look like. It used to be like a Continental Inn. They spent like two years like renovating the entire place, painting everything. It's like new and fresh. <laughs> you okay in there? It does look like there's gonna be more expansions over the years. There's like a full downstairs area that hasn't been built yet. And there's like the tennis courts and stuff in the back. So I think they're gonna be adding stuff. This is like the equivalent of like going to like Pop Century or like Art of Animation at Disney. There's just so many little Easter eggs everywhere you look. If you're a Cartoon Network fan, you're gonna love this hotel. From what I found out is the amusement park next door owned this hotel and then they partnered with Cartoon Network to like renovate it. The main thing I wanna talk about is the service here. Every single person we talk to here, 10 out of 10, customer service, super friendly. Normally when you go to certain like Orlando hotels, you know, you'll get one or two people that really stand out, like that really make your experience. And here, every single person we interacted with like made our experience and made the hotel. There you go. There you go. Oh, where'd it go? What? over here. No! We're finishing our breakfast and our server, Jacob, uh, we had him as a bartender last night. And he was like, hey, I got you guys a little gift and uh, he gave Frank and I each like a big thing of coffee, 10 out of 10 for the Cartoon Network Hotel. I did not think I was gonna be saying that coming into this place, but good job, guys. All right, so on that note, we have to finish up packing up and then um, I think we're gonna go visit the Amish today in a horse and buggy, yeah. Oh, I see a buggy. Oh, we in Amish country right now. Wait, so we're gonna be in something like that? Yeah, you've never been in a buggy? No.
what are you expecting to happen? I guess we're gonna be sitting in a buggy, as they call it, and just, they're gonna show us, oh, that horse is taking a piss. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh, I never, I don't, I don't, you've never seen a horse pee? Not like that, right in front of me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yo, so what, a, what a start to the day already, man. We haven't even gotten out of the car. All right, well, there, there's the horse that uh, Franco was uh, eyeballing over there. Oh, my God. That is... Watch that be the horse pulling us the entire time. And now it's going to be awkward. You can't make eye contact with him now. Okay, so this is where we're going. Aaron and Jessica's buggy ride. There's a bunch of different tours you can do. We're going to do the hour-long farm tour. Here they are. These guys are so massive. Oh, my gosh. One small step for Italian kind right there. We got front row. So the horse's name is Shooter, and that's Ted. Ted's on the left, and Shooter's on the right. Come boys. Whoa! Hey. Now they're going. So then, when you're on the road, do you need a license, or how no, does they it? Don't. No, they don't. And then, how have the carriages changed over time? Have they? Have you added anything, or better lights and better brakes? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything that makes an Amish home different than not a really. standard home? Well, they're not hooked up to electric. You know, we're not hooked up to electric yet, so. but you can't always see the difference. Years ago, they had the big trees. Now they plant these little dwarf trees to get more apples to break this way and less labor. What's the largest family? 18 children out here. Oh my gosh. Well, there have been larger ones yeah. already, but when I was young, there were three families in Langs County with 18 children. Wow. One of them has 170 grandchildren now. 100? Oh my 170. god. 170. Huh? No. They'll have a thousand grades sometime, probably. With 19 children and 212 grandchildren. That's insane. 212 grandchildren? Wow. All right, so we're now on his farm now. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous out here. Yeah, we're heading into the barn right now. You see that? Oh, yeah, you can see it. Oh, yeah. She doesn't have kittens. But this was built in 1860. Look at the tree. Oh, yeah. Look at that piece of wood. Axed yeah. out by hand. Yeah, yeah. 35, 40 foot long. Wow. That's awesome. These posts were axed out by hand. Yeah. No nails or screws. No nails. Then braces go part in there, part in there, and then drill holes. No nails or screws paint. to put this entire barn together. It all fits in together like a puzzle. Yeah, we're going into the old milk house right now. Then he could do 50 or 60 cows an hour and a half. This uh, milk tank is where he stored the milk. We had to keep the milk you know, below 40. We used to keep it about 37 degrees. But that was a job every morning, every evening. When me and my wife were farming, my alarm was set for us. Four o'clock in the morning for seven days a week, you know, just year after year, pretty much. Well, I enjoyed farming then, but I'm glad I'd rather have this job now. Yeah, they got golden retrievers over there. <gasps> uh, this is oh, this where all the cows were. There's a water line. This is where you tied your cows up and to milk them, and they got their water right here. Two cows drank out of the same bowl. Took a lot of feed. <coughs> milk and cow. <coughs> <coughs> Why are you afraid of farm animals? This is like your nightmare, isn't it? I don't know if it's my nightmare, I'm just not about it. <laughs> just pet him, it's not the... No, I'm good. I, I like to observe from a distance. <laughs> so I'll do a root beer and some homemade cookies. All right, so we got chocolate chip cookies, honey mustard pretzels, and then the root beer. <laughs> We're heading back. Oh, oh boy. Awesome people. The buggy ride was there. We just walked over and this is where we are. All right, so it's like a giant country store, it looks like. And then the restaurant is this way. So we're at some uh, barbecue restaurant right next door. It's time to try the uh, root beer. Who knows if this is going to be any good. He's kind of pulled it out of his shed, but you know, life short. So it's not carbonated. It's just like flat. I'm going to finish drinking it because I've already committed. So you just got to, what's the worst that could happen if I finish the whole thing? Uh, but uh, our barbecue's here. Got like a brisket sandwich with fries and barbecue sauce. All right, we just finished the uh, the smokehouse barbecue. Eh, kind of just like your standard mediocre bar barbecue. Uh, so I kind of want to talk about the, our little horse and buggy thing. Very interesting. There was so much that went on that I 
that I didn't film. Um, so I asked, like, do you guys have health insurance? We learned that I, the Amish people just fly down to Mexico to get work done with doctors. He was like, yeah, I got two hip replacements done. Yeah, in Cancun. Then he came back, so I asked him if like the Amish could join the military, and then he said his brother was in Vietnam, and then went on to this tangent about how they would use children and like to blow them up. Blow everything up. And like we're there with a bunch of other people with kids, and we were all just like silent. So it is time to hop back in our car. Like I'm gonna try these cookies. I feel pretty good after that root beer. I feel like maybe it's gonna give me superpowers or something, or my beard is gonna grow. But everybody has been super nice that we've talked to down here. Crazy the lifestyle that they live. I could never do it. I learned, I guess, the difference between the Amish and the Mennonite is I guess Mennonites can use electricity, but the Amish don't use electricity. And then there's like so many different like versions of Amish. All right, let's try our mystery bag of um, honey mustard pretzel. Mmm, okay, these are fire. These are good. Wow. All right, now it's time for uh, mystery cookies. The guy was snacking on one when we were heading back. <coughs> yeah, so all, all I smelled was like chocolate breath. Yeah. Mm, nothing special. Yeah, it's an all right cookie. Yeah. Okay, so in order to get from the Cartoon Network Hotel to the buggy place, it's only like 10 minutes. We've been driving around for like 20 it's minutes in the Amish country, and we have a feeling we're just gonna keep going in circles, and then we're eventually gonna become Amish, and you guys will never see this video. What would you do if you're Amish? What? Dude, I wouldn't want to be Amish. I'm very intrigued by the Amish because it's just such a different world than what we're used to. The biggest thing that kind of like my jaw dropped was the amount of like children that they have. Like the one lady had like over 200 grandchildren and then he was like, then after that, then she'll have like a thousand great grandchildren. That's a lot. I don't know how you can spend enough time with one of those kids. I don't know how any family can juggle that many kids. And also like, I remember back in biology, like what the Punnett Square, you have to have like diversity within the genetic code. And I think I'm overthinking it right now. But when I was asking the guy, I was like, so there's so many people being born, where are they all going? He said like, they've pretty much like run out of space because land costs so much so there's like Amish communities in like 40 states in America because they're just having to find new land because the population is just exploding every single person we interacted with in Lancaster is super nice I do want to go back another day and visit and like explore the little shops and the food that they have now guys back to the Cartoon Network Hotel again I had a blast if you are going just remember you're in Pennsylvania so it's kind of set up like a motel where it's like it's not an enclosed room within a hotel it's you know the outdoors so like you will experience like bugs and gnats and stuff like that. If you've never been, I would suggest going. There's a lot of stuff that like was closed that will eventually open. They apparently they even have character meet and greets. I'm sure one day I'm gonna go back and visit and check in with everyone and see how they're all doing. I want to personally thank Garrett. Thank you so much for donating on Patreon and funding this video. Guys, I love you all. Please stay safe and I'll see you all on Monday. We're gonna end the video with um one of Lou's magic tricks. Enjoy. Sure. Sure. No. Who's gonna show us the magic trick with the pencil? I hope he doesn't slam my head into it. Okay. <laughs> this writing on this pencil is nowhere else. Else. Oh, it disappeared. You made it disappear. Oh, no, here, no, here, okay. now watch. Okay. But watch. I put my hand over this and watch. It's gone. Oh. It's gone. Right? Yeah. Nothing over here. Nothing, nothing over, over there. Here. Nothing over here. Nothing over here. Now watch. I'm not, I'm not going to come back. Well, it's gone. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, there you go. It came oh, back. It's it back. came back. Look See? at that. Now when you're taking a shower, you have to like squeeze these. I'm used to just like pressing them down to have the stuff out. So for the uh, revitalizing gel douche, you just kind of have to squeeze it like an udder to have the soap come out.